pretty people of the internet and welcome to my channel. My name is Annika and today I'm going to talk about outlines in law school. The minute you start law school, like during orientation, people will start talking about outlines and no one will bother to tell you what they are or how to make them. So in this video I'm going to cover what outlines are, how to make them, and how to use them for success in law school. I'm sorry if the lighting is very weird in this video, I will try to edit and fix it, but we have a lot of wildfires in Oregon right now and a lot of smoke, so even though it's the middle of the day, it's very dark. Uh, outside is like completely like orange, brown, gray right now, so I'm not sure if this video will be completely blue, completely orange, if it will be too dark, too light, don't know until I edit. So what are outlines? An outline is a study guide. It's an outline of the course or the area of law. That's it. I don't know why they decided to call them outlines instead of study guides, but that's what they decided to do. They being unknown law school gods. Exactly what an outline will look like depends on the person who writes it and the class it's for, but it's generally some kind of text document, usually a word document, with information about that area of law and that class. An outline will differ from your notes in that an outline is organized more neatly and it has less information but more to the point information. Depending on you, the purpose of the outline, which I will get into later, and the course, an outline can be from 2 pages to 100 pages. It's not uncommon that when people start making their outlines they make them super super long and as they work through them they will cut them down into a manageable size. You might also at this point have found that there are commercial outlines. Commercial outlines are written and sold as kind of study guide books by different companies. These outlines can be a great study tool but do not rely on them. They have organized material in a way that makes sense to them, not a way that makes sense to you or your professor or your exam. Professors will often also caution you to use outlines because some of them might be outdated or they might be longer or shorter than you need. So how do you make an outline? Again, this differs depending on what class it's for, the person making it, and the purpose of the outline. In law school, some professors allow open book exams. And this can mean a variety of different things, so make sure to clear this with your professor before the exam and before you start really studying for the exam. I've had professors who have said, closed book, no notes allowed. Some who have said you can bring in two pieces of paper. Some who have said you can bring in the textbook but nothing else. Some who have said you can bring in everything. Everything that you've prepared or been given in the class. You can bring the textbook, your class notes, your outline. No commercial outlines but outlines you prepared on your own with friends if you've contributed significantly and any rule books for, for instance, civil procedure. So make sure before you start working on your outline that you know the purpose of the outline. Is it just for you to study before the exam to memorize the material? Is it like a reference guide for you in the exam? If and how you can use your outline during an exam should impact how you write it and how you organize it. When I started making my outlines, I would always start with my class notes. So I would look at my class notes and I would have my reading notes right next to it to supplement the class notes. And I would write down everything that I had marked as being important in my class notes. So I wouldn't write down everything, I would only write down the important things. For me, the process of typing up my notes to make an outline took a lot of time because I wrote all my notes by hand. For the most part, there was a little discretion at the very end, but for most of law school I took my notes by hand. I therefore had to allocate a lot of time to typing up my notes, but I felt like this really helped me because I would review the material again and make sure that I really understood what I had written down because I was typing it up. So for me, writing my notes by hand and then typing them up was a great way for me to really reflect on the material and make sure I understood what was going on. As you make your outline, you don't just want to compile your notes, you want to check your knowledge of those notes. This is why it can often be helpful to have the syllabus next to you if they have learning goals on them. Uh, it can help to have uh, your textbook, it can help to have commercial outlines, especially when considering how to organize your outline. You don't have to organize the notes in your outline the same way the professor organized it in the course, nor do you have to organize it in the same way that the textbook did. Sometimes it makes more sense to put a case or a rule in a different section of your outline, or to start with a different section. Teaching law can be hard because you have to start somewhere, but there's not necessarily 
a more logical place to start than another. So some things work for some people and they don't work for others. And you have to figure out what works for you. For me, it often helped to start with the big picture. If I was working on civil procedure, I wanted to start with where are we in the process? If I was working on criminal law, I wanted to start with what crime are we talking about? A crime against person, against property, against the state? Where are we? And then I would organize my outline accordingly. I have always included a lot of flowcharts in my outline. I would usually draw these out by hand to get like a rough idea and then make them in Word. It would often be a little if this then that, putting a little balancing test. Often I would also reference to the page in my outline where there would be more information. So if I could bring an outline into an exam, I could start with my flowchart to see where the problem at hand was, where in sort of where the issue was, then I could go to that specific part of my outline to have as a reference. I would often make a first draft of my outline. I would type it up, do what I thought was correct, print it out, and then work with it from there. I would take this outline and read it next to a commercial outline. So I would go through and check that I understood everything, that I had all the information there, that I hadn't missed any important points. Most of us don't catch every single thing at all times, so there's gonna be gaps. Hopefully by going through your reading notes, your class notes, notes you've taken in your textbook, and a commercial outline will really show you what those gaps are, and they will put it together in your outline to make sure that you've covered all the things that the professor could test. You don't need to know everything about the law. No one does. That's not the expectation. The expectation is that you understand the complexities and the nuances and areas that the professors have stressed a lot. I always have my outlines printed out, then I write notes and highlight and everything on them. If I have to go back and reorganize things or add things, I will do that and print it out again. But I will study from my outline. So how do you use an outline? As I said before, some professors allow you to bring outlines or part of outlines into an exam, while some do not. Either way, you're supposed to know the material on your outline. Most law school exams are time pressured, meaning that you can't just learn everything from your outline on site. You have to know and understand the law and only use your outline as kind of like a backup, like a safety net, like just in case you brain fart or you want to include the name of a case and you can't remember what the name was, but you know what it was about and you can quickly find it. You want to be so familiar with your outline that you know what's around what you're looking for, what page it is, other information there. Use your outline when going through essay questions and hypotheticals and multiple choice to practice for the exam. All the information you need to answer the question should be in the question itself and on your outline. If the information is not there, that shows you that you have a knowledge gap that you need to fill in. For longer outlines, I would also definitely recommend having a table of contents so that you can very easily find the right space. You can also tab your outline. I am a big proponent of tabbing, highlighting, writing notes, anything you're allowed to do on your outline to make sure that the right things pop out for you, that you know where things are, that you recognize where to go looking for information that you often forget or mess up on. In my first year, maybe year and a half of law school, I made a whole variety of different outlines for every class in order to figure out what worked for me. I wouldn't use every outline, but it took a little bit of trial and error to figure out how my brain worked, how the material was best organized, and what to do for the class. For certain classes, I didn't even make like a traditional outline. I would use flashcards, either physical flashcards or on Quizlet, um, I would use other flowcharts and handouts from the professor, and I would learn the material that way. I would normally show you my physical outlines, but because I do not have them, I will do a screen recording and show a few of the things. This also doesn't show the full picture, because I, as I said, I do highlight and write on my notes and my outlines, and obviously because this is digital, I don't have that. Here's my outline for civil procedure, which was my favorite class one a year, maybe most of law school. I know most people don't like civil procedure. I absolutely loved it. For this class, I think I followed what the professor did in organizing the class. Here's what I'm talking about. I start with the topic, then I had the rules, then I had a little float chart with some of the tests that would be needed or have been met in order to do something. 
Obviously civil, civil procedure is a very rule heavy class, so I would also write down the exact rule and highlight and underline the appropriate parts. I am a big proponent of flowcharts, as can sort of be seen through this whole document. In certain parts of the outline, since we were allowed to, I did with my friend group. For instance, we have this like full table where we had a few of the different cases to figure out minimum contact and whether it had been met or not. Because that analysis was so fact specific, it helped to have an overview of the case, the rule, the issue, the holding, and the test and or the facts for that case. For contracts, I was only allowed to bring in five pages. So what I first did was to make an overview of all the different topics that we had tested. Um, just so I understood what I had to figure out, the terms that I should know, and the things I should be looking for. Then I made a table of all the cases that were applicable and that demonstrated one of these concepts very well and I would put in the column of either being enforceable or not enforceable. I put in the name of the case because we had to know that for this class and then a few facts that triggered my memory at the time about that case. I didn't need a lot of facts and details to remember the case because I was a nervous 1L so I paid a lot of attention to everything. For torts, I had both this big table and like a traditional outline with bullet points. This one for me was sort of like an easy reference thing, or the type of tort, the intent needed, the elements needed, causation, apprehension, and damages um, for intentional torts. Prima facie cases for intentional torts. This was so that I could easily find the specific facts given to us and determine what kind of case they could bring. For instance, if they weren't aware of what was going on, then you can't collect on a false imprisonment case. I also had the full outline that made sense to me. For constitutional law, we were not allowed to bring in an outline. It took me a way to figure out how to best organize my thoughts and outline for this class. And I organized things very differently than the, than the professor and the syllabus. Here, for instance, I would start with ways state laws can be unconstitutional uh, by preemption, taxing issues, dormant commerce clause, privilege and immunities, privileges or immunities, full faith or credit, then power of the courts, Supreme Court review, the legislative branch, executive powers, separation of powers, and then a few other random issues like the war on terror, incorporation of bill of rights. For immigration law, my 2L year, we had a take-home exam that was eight hours long. It was super intense. It was actually like seven hours of pure writing, like I didn't have time to take a lunch break, which none of us really expected. Here's what my outline for that class looked like. Here I have sorted alphabetically the term or the topic, the page of the outline textbook or rule book it was on, and the statute that governed it. This outline is also, yeah, 33 pages. I didn't process this outline as much as some other ones, simply because I had so much time. Um, and because I knew the material pretty well. I think this one was the most important one to have like to know where to reference back to the statute and the page number and then the comment about it so that I could easily find what I was looking for. For environmental law I was only allowed to bring in five pages front and back so this one ended up being teeny tiny <laughs> teeny tiny little font um, and I would start with for instance here this whole page is about the Clean Air Act and then it breaks down into smaller groups so the different columns are like within that area so we would have criteria air pollutants hazardous air pollutants and this thing was on its own and I use highlighters when I had printed it out to sort of section off the different things so it was easier to look at 
I think the smoke just got worse because the sky outside just shifted to a complete like yellow color which is super freaky but anyway I hope that helps I hope that gives you a good idea of what an outline is how you make it and what it can look like it's kind of a process where you just have to try and feel it out and feel what works and doesn't work for you be flexible be okay with your outline looking different between classes or your final outline looking very different than what you originally started with. This is why I always advise that you wait a little bit because then you know more what you're looking for. If you're not comfortable waiting until the end of the semester to start outlining, I would suggest outlining after every single topic is finished. So again for criminal law that could be after crimes against the property, crimes against people, crimes against the state. That could be a way to organize it. Whatever works for you and your brain. Don't be scared when your outline looks very different from your friends. Don't be scared when your friends outline don't make any sense to you. I have only ever asked for other people's outlines to get an idea of how they organize their thoughts, especially for things like environmental law where I wasn't really sure how to fit everything into five pages. But I have never found other people's outlines all that useful because there's our brains work differently, but I've never found other people's outlines to be useful for practicing for the exam or for me to understand the material. That is why it's so important that you make your own. Your outline should be your first go-to place to look for answers when you are struggling with practice questions. It is very nice and handy to have all the information you will need in one document instead of having to look at your notes and the textbook and a commercial outline and online in order to find the answer. You might not need to know by heart every single thing that's in your outline, like case names and years, unless your professor specifically say that's important, but you need to understand everything that's there. You need to know how to apply it, you need to know the different elements, you know how the balancing works. The point of an outline isn't to memorize it, but it is to know everything that's in it. Either to know where to reference it, or to know the rules by heart, or to know how to apply it and use it when presented to you in a fact pattern. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, including the little bell button if you want a notification of when I upload new videos. Make sure to click this video if you want more tips on how to take notes in law school, and this video if you want more tips on just how to do well in law school overall. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to y'all later. Bye!